When you mention fishing rods and amateur radio, the first thing most people think of is their potential for antennas. But there's other parts of a fishing rod that could be useful in radio and electronic projects. Here is a winding thing from a fishing rod. Fishing line here and crank handle. So you can wind the line in quickly. Have a look carefully. See how this bit spins much quicker than the handle. That means that there's gears giving a mechanical reduction. That's confirmed on here where you might be able to read it. It says gear ratio 4.7 to 1. So for every 4.7 turns of this, you get one turn of this. That's got a lot of potential for radio because if you think of it the other way, you turn this, you need 4.7 turns of this for one full turn of the handle here. With a variable capacitor, like you see there, that normally is a half a turn, so you've got just over two turns of this gives you half a turn of the variable capacitor, which makes tuning much, much easier. That's really important if you're building radios with these types of variable capacitors, because just having a knob on the variable capacitor means you've only got half a turn and tuning can be quite difficult especially if you're trying to tune a wide frequency range or if you're trying to receive SSB stations. So mechanical reduction is really important to having a usable radio with these types of variable capacitors. Unfortunately, radio reduction drives are expensive, but if you're clever with mechanics, there's a possibility of using one of these to be a reduction drive instead. And that should be a lot, lot cheaper, especially if you can find an old fishing rod somewhere. Now there are some challenges. First of all, you need to somehow couple a knob onto this. Maybe you could get a tin of tuna. Maybe that's the right size that you could put over it. Anyway, a large control is probably better for finer tuning. Another thing that notice when I turn this around is that you've got rotation on this side and on this other side so you've basically got a spindle going through which is potentially very very useful that's for at least two reasons I can think of if you've looked inside old pieces of communications equipment and this is really old stuff, probably commercial grade, not necessarily consumer grade. You may have a mechanism not unlike this, where you've got one part of the shaft going to the variable capacitor, and the other end could go to a large drum, which could be a frequency readout. So, if you had one of these, Maybe the front panel is there. You had a drum. Maybe it's made out of, um, again, a can of tin fish. Anyway, you, you need some way of extending this shaft, going through the middle of that tin, and that gives you a drum style of dial. So you'd have a front panel here and little hole in the front of the panel revealing some of the dial. And so that's how a lot of the old receivers before you had digital readouts in say the 50s, 60s, even 70s had a drum style dial where you had your frequencies. Then on this side, you had your variable capacitor coupled to it. Now, another thing uh, that's worth noting, just turn this clockwise. Now this end, this side turns anti-clockwise. while looking at it from this angle, this side turns clockwise. So, 
you have the option of either anti-clockwise or clockwise movement depending on which side you put your variable capacitor that can be handy because it affects whether you tune from low to high frequency or high to low frequency when you go clockwise and generally speaking you want to be tuning from low to high frequency when you go clockwise so that can affect where you mount the variable capacitor this variable capacitor for example when it's fully meshed the local oscillator connected to the receiver will be at its lowest frequency and when it's unmeshed with the least capacitance it will be at its highest frequency normally you'd have your lower frequency stations down here high frequency stations up here but not all the time there's another case where having one side going anti-clockwise and the other going clockwise could be handy certain antenna couplers the more complex circuits use a differential variable capacitor arrangement where one capacitor goes up in value as the other capacitor goes down in value not very commonly used these days because it's mechanically awkward but if you wanted to you could potentially have them controlled by this particular unit you could have the one variable capacitor on this shaft the other on this shaft and when one is near maximum capacitance the other is near minimum capacitance then when you go the other way it's reversed the capacitor on the left is near minimum capacitance and the one on the right is near maximum capacitance the hardest part of all this is working out the coupling how do you couple the shaft from this to the shaft of the variable capacitors there's also a few things you don't actually need like you probably don't need this bit but you might be able to reuse it I've just unscrewed that this could be handy for something really important thing is finding a suitable spindle which you then need to couple to the variable capacitor this is the crank that came out and a bit hard to see but looks a bit like an allen key i think there might be six sides on it now this allen key looks about the right size almost but not quite a bit too small maybe a dab of glue would fix it but still it's sort of promising this tent peg is almost but not quite a bit of filing, careful filing, might be required. This screw is another possibility, but I'm not going to work it too hard. Don't want to strip anything inside here. Or from a Meccano set, too small. Knitting needle, you might be able to file it and it will fit in. Benefit of that is it's a similar diameter to the quarter inch shafts on variable capacitors so you can use some form of coupling preferably flexible coupling so you can connect the two maybe you could even make use of the crank handle 
that came out of the original winder. Uh, you've got a pin through there, so that could be useful for coupling to something else. Just need to saw away, melt away, cut away the plastic. But as this is a hexagon, an Allen key, or even an Allen key slightly too big and filed down would seem to be most promising. As for the control, this is not actually a spindle. You don't actually turn this around, but you do turn this bit here. So you might be able to glue this onto here and make it project out a bit more and that can be your tuning control. And by the way, you might be able to see there, there's a little lever that allows you to turn it in one direction and not the other. You don't actually want to use that. So maybe you'd remove the catch. There's some little screws there that you might want to do that. Or just flip it this way and then it can turn in both directions. So that's just a few ideas of what you could do with a fishing rod winder. I haven't actually built it and yours will very likely be different anyway. So have a bit of a think, have a look around, see what you've got in your shed and see if you can put the bits together to make a nice vernier reduction drive dial. With bits like this you might already have. Every successful QRP outing needs a good antenna. To get some ideas, check out my books, hand-carried QRP antennas, and more hand-carried QRP antennas. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.